And finally today, the fired prosecutor story hasn't always been that much fun to watch. So this week, we've decided to cover the story by pretending it's something with excitement and theatrics. That's right, we're making the story into a figure skating competition, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be evaluating the players based on style, performance, and execution. So let's get started. First of all, we've got Senator Pat Leahy, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. You know, I think he, he's come out of this. He makes, he makes the Democrats in the Senate look strong. I'm going to give him, if you don't mind us, sort of, we've got a little low budget situation going on here. I'm giving him a. S <laughs> Hold on. I'm giving him a seven. All right, I'm going with 7.6. Nicely done. I'm going, I say that, I think he's done a good job being out in front of it and having just the right amount of curmudgeonly toughness to go after the White House. Okay, nice, ex excellent use of the decimal point there. Arlen yes. Specter, the uh, former chairman, now ranking member of the committee, abstained from the subpoena vote yesterday. I'm going to go with uh, a four for Arlen Specter. I've been a little disappointed with how cautious he's being that he's been sort of behind the scenes negotiating that and I was expecting that he'd maybe you know you know come out there and give the White House something to worry about he's never ever been I'm gonna give him an even lower I'm going for a three he's never been a strong supporter of this administration but he's also somebody who in tough fights abstains always abstains remember what he did during impeachment he didn't actually abstain I think he withheld his vote because based on Scottish law what's the actual term he used I can't remember not somebody proven. not proven right he voted <laughs> not proven thank you producer Dan all right Senator Chuck Schumer always always on top of his game there you go Chuck eat it <laughs> Say five for Chuck Schumer. Oh, all right. On balance, he still does okay, I guess. He does okay, but I mean, the the whole uh, conflict of interest with the DSCC that hurt him a little bit. And I mean, it's never that fun to see Chuck Schumer on TV all the time talking about these things. So yeah, five. I mean, it's okay. So so. This is so Dancing with the Stars. All right. Next up, Alberto Gonzalez, the current, although by the time the show airs, potentially former Attorney General. Look. I Charles Krauthammer was out with a column today, and I got to quote him directly. He muffed a two-foot putt. This, it, you know, the, the 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 parameters of this scandal, the parameters, of this, <laughs> <laughs> parameters oh. of this scandal. I'm going to give him a zero point one. Oh. It's but the parameters of this scandal are, are dubious, they're questionable, a lot of Democrats excited about it. Uh, but the fact that he and the, and, the, and the Bush White House has allowed this thing to go on as long as they ridiculous. have is ridiculous, is what I say. All right, Harriet Myers, former White House counsel. Come on, give her I'm at least a couple a points. I'm going to give her a because I just, I feel sorry for Harriet Myers. She's not even in the White House anymore. Right. And she's still getting, you know, dragged through, I mean. You're giving her an eight? I feel really bad for well, her. Well, that's not, you're, oh my gosh. All right, eight, eight for Harriet Myers, uh, two from John McCurry. <laughs> All right, Fred Fielding, Fred Fielding, uh, the uh, White House counsel. All right. Coming back, coming back from the White House years to serve in this uh, administration, uh, faces another scandal. I'm giving the guy a two. I'm sorry, Fred. It just hasn't looked good from the White House's perspective to come out and make the argument uh, about the transcript. You have to, what you have to do, I think, is brief Tony Snow better on the parameters of the argument because he comes out and talks to the press and sounds completely unprepared. Absolutely. And it's never a good thing when you're the messenger for the White House going in, you know, going in between the White House and Congress and just delivering. You, he's the, the messenger for this huge constitutional fight. Right. And it doesn't look good for him. All right, President Bush himself. Wow, this is tough. This is a tough one. I think he's. I think he, he wants to play this high stakes game with the Democrats in, in the Senate and the House. He looks at this as sort of his first opportunity to really confront the Democrats on an issue he thinks he's on solid ground on. Mm -hmm. You got to give him that. You got to give him the fact that he's sticking up uh, for his aides and for his prerogative. Oh, interesting. Look at that. Great minds. But then again, I mean, it's not good for Bush. This is just. Right, as Scooter Libby ends, this one starts. It seems like the last two years have just been an endless train of resignation calls. Right, but on the other hand, you know, the Democrats want to be talking about the issues in Iraq. I think there are a lot of Americans around the country who are saying we're still at war, we're still fighting a war, and you guys are arguing and taking up so much time right. with this U.S. attorney squabble. Yeah. So, uh, you know, to some extent, I think Democrats get hurt. David Iglesias, former U.S. attorney from the uh, great state of New Mexico. Uh, I think doesn't really come out of this eight. Interesting. I think he's done a very good job painting himself as the victim in this whole scenario. The op-ed that he wrote in the New York Times on Wednesday, he came out and he even complimented President Bush for thanking him for his service, since nobody's ever done that. And he said, all I want you know, is someone to apologize to me. That's mm -hmm. it. And I think he's done a very 
good job in being very clear that he was just a victim doing his job and he was unfairly fired. I'm giving him a six. I think the actually the more compelling personal case uh, of a U.S. attorney being fired was the woman in Michigan, Margaret uh, Macias, I think her name was, mm -hmm. uh, who had personal issues, personal struggles that she was dealing with. And as she said uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the deputy, uh, to Paul McNulty, Look, all I want is for, uh, is for my resignation or for my, for my uh, removal to be not based on performance, and that was, I think, the biggest problem. Heather Wilson, Congresswoman from, uh, from the uh, great state of New Mexico, in big trouble, already uh, a, a, a radio ad being run against right. her. Right, and I give Heather Wilson a two. I mean, she was in trouble last election. She escaped, you know, losing re-election by the skin of her teeth, and this is not going to help anything for her. I'm going to give her a little bit higher. I'm giving her a four. Heather Wilson always survives. I've been covering that woman forever. She <laughs> always survives. Just like Cher and cockroaches, <laughs> Heather Wilson will continue to survive. You Thank do, you very much. You do Peter no, we're done. She's we're in Paris. Okay. All right, never mind. Oh, I mean, it's, it ran no, long. Didn't it run kind of long? It, it wasn't too bad. It was, I, I, I stopped to tell you guys. Let's let's just stop. I mean, yeah, that's the end. Right? Okay, ready? Wait, hold on. Should I just? Say, I got to wrap it up. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, more. I guess just one final comment. Yeah, Wilson. You know, but because I'm going to switch. So. Well, uh, um, Wilson. What were we just saying? I was saying uh, she'll she'll survive. She'll always survive. Say something about Domenici, like a very similar. Oh yeah, just mention Domenici's name. Okay. Uh, starting when? Three, two. One. And you can't forget about Pete Domenici, who's in a similar situation as Heather Wilson. This could really come back to bite him in 2008. Up for re-election himself. All right, that'll do it. Thank you very, very, very much. A lot of paper on our desk here. Maura <laughs> O'Brien, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.